Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for this opportunity to take part in this discussion. Um, and thank you very much to Deloitte for producing this excellent report. The committee I chair, the Public Administration Select Committee, focuses on, across departments on the performance of government, the process of good governance. Um, we do not have the resource that you've been able to devote to this report. And um, it's, uh, th we, my entire committee will read this report with immense interest. Uh, we've concentrated in this parliament on really two strands of scrutiny. One is about uh, how the government thinks strategically, how the government sets its key strategic aims, how it defines national strategy. And we're finding quite a lot of resistance amongst uh, ministers and civil servants who feel that um, uh, the word strategy is potentially imprisoning and restricting, and they're much better off doing that great British uh, tradition of muddling through and uh, cobbling together. Um, but I think it's becoming evident uh, that in the more complex the challenges the government faces, uh, the more challenging the uh, economic environment, uh, the more testing uh, the, political, the political difficulties, the more important it is to be able to think clearly about what your ultimate strategic aims actually are and to know how you're going to deliver them and to understand how uh, your policies and delivery plans have got to uh, remain flexible in order to uh, keep responding to change circumstances and events. So strategy is not about setting in stone some definitive deterministic plan. It's about having the right attitudes um, whilst focusing on the right aims. And the other major strand of our work and we're not to be confused with the Public Accounts Committee, we are PASC, not, not PAC, has been looking at the, um, the very ambitious change in government that the coalition set out to achieve. And you'll remember that Francis Maud and uh, David Cameron uh, both appeared at the first <laughs> Civil Service Live conference in the summer of 2010, talked about turning government on its head, uh, massive localism, decentralisation, uh, the big society, uh, changing the state from the delivering state, the, um, the um, managing state to the enabling state, uh, talking about new ways of providing public services through the private sector, through voluntary organisations. Um, and a great deal of this is happening. But um, a great deal of it is, is not happening. It's proving far more resistant. The system is proving incredibly uh, resilient uh, in its own terms to the pressures and desires that ministers want to put upon it so that we keep hearing stories about how ministers and special advisers are totally exasperated by the uh, custom and practice of the civil service, the resistance to change and the difficulties and challenges uh, of implementing change. But the, the need for change in government is now incontestable. I mean, we... we the, the, the figures we've heard, we're still spending, the government is still spending f about 50% of the national wealth. And if you're spending 50% of the national wealth on those productivity statistics, it's hardly surprising uh, that the economy I is underperforming. So coming back to what the government's got to do, um, I thought the, um, the, the, the very uh, attractive picture at the front of the, um, um, at front of the report highlights a number of very interesting challenges. Um, the fact that the health reforms might only be partly implemented because basically the old PCTs are going to carry on managing the new primary care commissioning groups because the expertise is not there in the service. The fact that the, the universal credit is dependent upon um, uh, a sharing of data between DWP, HMRC, and um, uh, the, um, um, uh, the, the banking system, uh, the real-time information coming through the, um, the, the BAC's automated payment system. Uh, and that technology is hugely challenging, very, very critical to the success <laughs> of the benefit. And yet, what do we know about government IT programs? Uh, they generally uh, go late over budget and then don't perform according to 
what they were originally set up to do. The fact that um, there's, a, there's an 124 uh, billion, um, uh, 124 million requirement for free schools to make the education policies work it might seem a very small number, but that, that figure's got to go through the public procurement process under the uh, EU uh, public procurement directives uh, so that the advantages of trying to do things off the balance sheet of the government are, are lost because it's got to go through the public procurement process. The fact, the point you made about, um, David, about uh, the 750 billion in cash being amassed by uh, the, the FTSE 100 companies and that, that this is not being invested in productive capacity in the United Kingdom. In fact, it's worse than that. The tendency is for that money to be invested abroad, highlighting the fact that we are not competitive in this country. We're not an attractive place for investment. We tend to attract foreign direct investment into this country uh, where it's about accessing European markets. We don't attract foreign direct investment for investment in our economy for its own sake. And um, uh, that is a, a, a very big challenge. Um, the fact that we're facing a backlash from the public sector. I mean, there's a big strike today. The, um, the unions are marching through the streets and picketing the hospitals and the police, even the police are doing a demonstration uh, in reaction to the trying to resolve the pensions, uh, public sector pensions. The, the fact that um, MOD procurement uh, is still catastrophic. The, I mean, the list goes on and on this rather pretty chart. I must say, it's a bit cruel to put the Ministry of Defence back in Nissen huts, but that's the way they feel about <laughs> it at the moment. <laughs> um, so we need, we need to, you know, something's gone wrong with the, with, with the whole process of government um, uh, if we can't tackle this. And indeed, the challenges facing government are very, very considerable. Now, taking a historical perspective, um, f certainly for as long as I've been politically conscious, there's always been a program to reform the civil service. I mean, going back to the 1960s and Harold Wilson, um, <coughs> 1970s, 1980s, and you had Margaret Thatcher and uh, um, uh, the SEAF reforms, and then you had um, the Next Steps agencies, and then, um, uh, then you had um, uh, the Citizens Charter, or, you know, endlessly trying to cajole the public sector into pr providing that customer focus um, and the outputs that uh, the private sector seems to deliver much more effectively than the public sector. And today, expectations for the reform of the civil service are perhaps higher than ever. Um, ministers need greater specialism in the civil service rather than the intelligent generalism that has become the fashion at the top of the civil service. They want more risk-taking, uh, amongst the, uh, the non-executive directors in, uh, who sit on the boards of government departments uh, are universally appalled uh, about how risk-averse risk the system is about making decisions um, compared to business. We're going to need to have a very, very big change in the mindset of those people who actually run the country, who, take the, who, who make the micro decisions about policies and allocations of resources across the piece. And at the moment, I don't think... Um, if you look at the, if you measure that civil service does every year, measure levels of engagement um, uh, in, um, in the process of government, how engaged individual civil servants feel in their departments. Uh, the civil service generally is absolutely the bottom of the, you know, the corporate spectrum that you, you would expect. Some departments are much worse than others. Interestingly, some departments are very good. DFID is very good. <coughs> But you go to HMRC or the Borders Agency, you're out, out down on the floor. No organisation can function like that. And that is a question of leadership, motivation, <coughs> empowerment, um, proper direction, getting people who are actually working down in the bowels of government to understand what the overall objectives are, what their purpose is, to give them a sense of belonging um, and a sense of purpose in their careers and in their work. And that's a huge challenge and one in which... Um, is perhaps a bit unglamorous and doesn't finish up in Queen's speeches um, and um, stuff like that, but nevertheless is actually the primary task of government, and we'll keep pushing on it. Thank you very much. <laughs>